This presentation is part of the TI in Focus AP Calculus video series. In this video, I'll discuss a specific concept associated with the 2018 AP Calculus exam, free response question AB6, namely Euler's method. My name is Steve Kokoska. I'm a professor at Bloomsburg University in Pennsylvania, and I'm a former AP Calculus chief reader. Here's an outline of the information presented in this video. I'll start with a little bit of background information. Try to demonstrate and illustrate the basic idea, or one step, behind Euler's method. I'll try to extend and generalize this method with an illustration. And then I'll present Euler's method using appropriate notation and calculus concepts. I'll complete an example, and then I'll show you how easy this is using technology. And I'll leave a few examples for you to try. The basic concept used to generate slope fields can be used to find a numerical approximation to the solution of a differential equation. Let's consider this initial value problem y prime is equal to minus x plus 2y, where y of 0 is equal to 1. Now, using the differential equation, we can find y prime of 0. Therefore, the solution curve has slope 2 at the point 0, 1. So, as a first approximation to the solution curve, we could use the linear approximation, and I'll call this L. And here, L of x is equal to 1 plus 2x. That is, we could use the tangent line to the graph of the solution curve at the point 0, 1 as a rough approximation to the solution curve. Here's a graph of the solution curve and the first Euler approximation, the tangent line to the solution curve at the point 0, 1. Euler's method improves on this approximation by proceeding only a short distance along the tangent line, and then making a mid-course correction by changing direction as indicated by the slope field. So this figure shows what happens if we start out along the tangent line, but stop when x is equal to 0 0.5. The horizontal distance traveled is called the step size. Since L of 0 0.5 is equal to 2, then y of 0 0.5 is approximately 2. That is, the y value on the solution curve at x equals 0 0.5 is approximately 2. So let's take 0 0.52 as the starting point for a new line segment, that is, a new tangent line. Using the differential equation, the slope of the new line is 3.5. And then use the new linear function here 0 0.25 plus 3.5x. Use this as an approximation to the solution for x greater than 0 0.5. This is the maroon segment in the figure. Now you can probably already see that if we decrease the step size, it seems reasonable that this procedure, Euler's method, would produce a better approximation. In general, Euler's method says to start at a point given by the initial value and proceed in the direction indicated by the slope field. Stop after a short distance, look at the slope at the new location, and proceed in a new direction. Continue stopping and changing or adjusting direction according to the slope field. Now Euler's method does not produce the exact solution to an initial value problem. It provides an approximation. By decreasing the step size, and therefore increasing the number of mid-course corrections, we can obtain a better approximation to the exact solution. This figure illustrates Euler's method with step size 0 0.25. Here's how we generalize this method. Consider the first order initial value problem, y prime equals f of x, y, with y of x sub 0 equal to y sub 0. Our goal is to approximate values for the solution at equally spaced numbers, x 0, x 1 equal to x sub 0 plus h, and so on, where h is the step size. 
we use the differential equation to find the slope at x sub 0, y sub 0. This figure illustrates the first step in Euler's method. And we continue in this manner to find y sub n. Here is a formal statement of Euler's method. In summary, we can find approximate values for the solution to this initial value problem with step size h by using this formula that we have just developed. And here's a closer look at this method. First, the step size could be negative. We could find successive approximations to the solution curve by moving to the left along the x-axis. And I think we've already seen visually that for better, more accurate approximations, we can decrease the step size. And here is some alternative notation that is often used. If we let h be equal to delta x and use Leibniz notation for the derivative, then y sub n is equal to y sub n minus 1 plus delta x times dy dx. In this example, Let's use Euler's method to construct a table of approximate values for the solution to this initial value problem. The step size here is 0 0.1. x sub 0 is equal to 0, and y sub 0 is equal to 1. And the slope at any point is minus x plus 2y. So I applied Euler's method with three steps. And here's an interpretation of my results, well, one of the results. If y of x is the exact solution to the initial value problem, then y of 0 0.3 is approximately 1.696. The TI Inspire has a built-in function to help with Euler's method. On a calculator page, it produces a matrix where the first row contains the x sub i's, and the second row contains the corresponding y sub i's. On a lists and spreadsheet page, I simply extracted the two rows to perhaps make it easier to read. And I added a counter to indicate the step number. So for you to try, use Euler's method with this initial value problem with decreasing step size to approximate these two values. And here's a nice conceptual question. What do you notice about these approximations as the step size decreases? Here are two final notes. And just a reminder again, the step size can be negative. For example, h could be minus 0.05. And some people like to use this handy tabular method to find Euler approximations. I think this is pretty logical, and it's convenient to use on the AP Calculus exam, especially on non-calculator active Euler's method questions. Here are some Euler's method practice problems. Now I won't read through all of these, but you might also consider producing the slope field for each problem in an appropriate window. I hope this video provides some insight into Euler's method, a few AP calculus type problems, and the use of technology to solve and visualize these types of problems. And just a reminder, there are lots of valuable resources on the TI website. There is material there involving technology and calculus, classroom activities, and lots of calculator tips and tricks for test success.